Welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast on the SalesCast Network. You've joined a global movement of sales professionals who are dedicated to being authentic and building trust. We call it Selling from the Heart. Together, we are on a mission to bring sincerity and substance to the sales profession we all love. Get ready to be inspired and equipped as we join our hosts, Larry Levine and Daryl Amy. I'm thrilled to introduce to you a revolutionary tool that will change the way you understand yourself and others. Our partners at the Y Institute have created the Y.OS Discovery Platform, a powerful tool that in just 10 minutes can help you uncover your core motivations, how you bring them to life, and what others can expect from you. This is more than just a self-awareness tool. It's a game changer for coaches and those who wanna help their clients reach their full potential. If you're a coach or a sales leader, Go to whyinstitute.com and look for the Y certification. We'll put the link in the show notes. When you reach out to the Y Institute, let them know you heard about it on Selling from the Heart, and you'll be on your way to helping your people discover what drives them. Don't just take our word for it. Go to whyinstitute.com and see the powerful impact the Y.OS discovery can have on your life. Hello, and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host, Daryl Amy, here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? Oh, I've just been, you know, I've been on this big celebration kick over the last couple of weeks. So if y'all have been following along, (laughs) Daryl's been announcing, right? Larry's going to turn five and Selling from the Heart's going to turn five. (laughs) Well, we're already past that. Party hats, party favors. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, there was a lot of cake and ice cream. And thank (laughs) you, everybody who joined us for the fifth anniversary celebration of the publication of Selling from the Heart. Congratulations, Larry. And now that we're coming off the uh, sugar high and we're on into the fall, (laughs) this is going to be a great episode. We've got Stan Phelps in the house. Get ready um, for some inspiration. And Larry, I love Selling from the Heart. And what I love the most about Selling from the Heart is this incredible community of heart-centered, authentic sales professionals that's gathered all around us. And uh, it has been so much fun getting to know heart-centered people from every corner of the sales profession. Yeah. And I just want to give us just a real quick shout out to Chris Dunn. Chris has came into our lives a couple of years ago. He plays an active role in our Selling from the Heart Insiders group. Chris Dunn, just wanted to give you a great shout out. You're a great sales leader and you wear your heart on your sleeve. Here, here. I agree 100%. Chris, we appreciate you and we appreciate everybody in the Selling from the Heart community. You know, we gather every Friday for the Selling from the Heart Insiders group. And if you'd like to learn more about that, we sure would love for you to join us. It is amazing gathering with other heart centered sales professionals and leaders. And if you want to come to the Selling from the Heart Insiders group, you can come give it a test drive, get a free pass to the next Selling from the Heart Insiders group at sellingfromtheheart.net slash free dash pass. That's sellingfromtheheart.net slash free dash pass and come find a community of people you wish you always had. You're really (laughs) going to like it. Well, speaking of a great person, a great community, we've got Stan Phelps in the house today. Stan is author of an incredible series of books, including The Diamond Goldfish. He works with organizations that increase loyalty, sales, and word of mouth through brand, customer, and an employee experience. His in-person virtual programs stand out in a sea of sameness. And boy, don't we need that. <laughs> he does it by modeling his own message of differentiated experience. Stan believes that differentiation isn't just about what you say. It's about what you do. And more importantly, how you do it and why you do it. We're excited to have Stan here in the Selling from the Heart studios. <laughs> Welcome. It's great to have you here. Stan yeah. Phelps. Yeah. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, Larry. Excited to be here. This is going to be a phenomenal conversation. As we get started, Stan, you know the question that every guest on the podcast answers, and that is, what does it mean to you, Stan, to sell from the heart? For, for me, selling from the heart is simply uh, doing business with compassion. Um, and for me, uh, I, I think compassion goes beyond empathy. Um, in Diamond Goldfish, uh, Anthony Iannarino wrote the foreword for it. 
And he said, compassion is way beyond just empathy. You know, I think empathy is important, you know, kind of walking a mile in your customer or client's shoes. But compassion goes beyond that. Compassion is about truly caring about them. It's understanding that their shoes might be, in Anthony's words, three sizes too small. <laughs> and you're you're going to help them find, you know, a better fit. Um, and so uh, the the name of my the name of my company is the LLC is called Nine Inch Marketing, and that is solely due to the heart. Do you know the the nine inches that relate to the heart? I don't. So this is an amazing thing the <laughs> the distance between the stem of your brain and the top of your heart is exactly nine inches. Beautiful. And what's amazing awesome. is that if you ask anyone to put their hand together, the distance between your pinky and your thumb for 90% of people, male and female, is exactly nine inches. Whoa. Oh, okay. Now I, I didn't know that I know I didn't know this was all gonna happen. We got Stan Phelps to come on the podcast. That's freaking awesome. But I, I, I love that you use the word <laughs> now, now I'm gonna sit here and yeah, everyone, I'm everyone, gonna sit here and it's out right now. I, I believe this works. Uh, it's good. But you know, I, I do like that you brought in the word compassion because yeah. it, it's compassion's near and dear to us here at Selling from the Heart, because without it. I just don't feel you can truly connect to somebody and that somebody is going to be a client, your future client for that matter, anyone you want to build a relationship with a true relationship with. So I'm so glad you brought the word compassion into this. Thank you. No, not my, my pleasure. I mean, a lot of my, a lot of my work around experience is really grounded in this concept that we make decisions really quickly Mm -hmm. about people that we work with and we interact with. And about 80% of how we view other people just comes down to two things, which is warmth, like sincerity, um, and competence. And, and the research shows, which one do you think is more important to people? Is it warmth or competence? I'm going with warmth. Larry, you think so? Yeah. In the, the I'm not going to dis. I'm going to go. I'm going to. I'm just going to go because I. If I was hey, wrong, for the Mr. record, Rose, Larry and I didn't disagree. So this is good. This is really good. But yeah, we're going <laughs> no, with serious. Warmth. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it does. People value warmth over competence, and um, every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Mm. Um, but it it's amazing to think that, and this is this tends to do with our biology as human beings on how we evolved um, and our biology is still very primitive. And if you think about when we walked out of the cave and we interacted with anyone, you know, we had to ask questions very quickly. Um, one, is this person a friend or a foe, which gets to the, the mm -hmm. heart of warmth. Mm -hmm. And then what's their ability to carry out their intent? You know, so the first one is what is their intent? Why are they doing what they do? which really speaks to the heart. And then competence is just the ability of them to be able to carry out that intent. Hmm. Um, and I think this is so powerful because as salespeople, especially I look back to my early training years ago as a salesperson. When he was coming out to, of a cave, Stan. <laughs> yeah, that's I walked out of the cave. <laughs> and um, well, actually, that was when Larry started selling. But that was the wheel was a really hot thing back then. But, you know, I, we walked into that role and uh, and fire as well. It was a brand new, brand new product, Larry. The uh, we walked into that that role and it was drilled into us. You got to learn the product. You got to learn the product. You got to learn the product. And. Truthfully, yes, we had a lot to learn about the product. But I think very early on in my sales career, and I think this happens to a lot of sales professionals, we get so wrapped up in the competence part of this uh, that we end up losing ourselves in the middle of all of it and the compassion and the warmth and the uh, empathy and all of the heart-centered things end up um, going out the window early on as we just go, okay, I got I to gotta know the product. I got to know the product. And 
And I think a lot of salespeople look up, um, you know, after a period of time and go, I kind of lost myself in all of this. I might be selling, yeah, I might be hitting my quota, but I kind of lost myself in all of it. Yeah. And I think how you differentiate yourself is, and this is core to my philosophy, is not in what you do. Mm -hmm. Because if we're honest, there's a lot of people that can do what you can do or what your organization can do Mm -hmm. to solve that problem. The way you differentiate yourself is one, like, why do you do it? And more importantly, how you provide how you provide it. Um, and to me, the great companies understand that it's less about the transaction mm-hmm. and it's more about the relationship. Um, you know, and, and here, and I'm glad you brought up the relationship part of this because this is where, this is the gray line or the gray matter a lot of times, because you'll get a lot of people said, you know what, I'm all about the relationship. I'm all about my clients. And I go right on. <laughs> then let's unpack what that relationship is. And yeah. is that relationship what you think it is? Is that the same that what the client thinks it is? And oftentimes there's a, you know, Stan, we find there's a disconnect, which mm. goes back to my theory that we just don't do enough out there to coach and train salespeople on people skills and how to build relationships in a way that sustains so people keep coming back for more and more and more of what you have to offer. And these are the things, quite frankly, salespeople can control. Yeah. In, in fact, in, in Diamond Goldfish, we call that this idea of, of like upgrading your human wear. <laughs> <laughs> right? Love it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, to me, that's two parts. One, you have to have a greater understanding of yourself and especially how you respond in situations where pressure is inherent. And then the second part is how do you understand your customer or your client to understand their behavioral styles so you can kind of manage the pressure that they feel? Yeah, that's so powerful. And I was, uh, I like this human wear uh, thing. And I was also just thinking of the hardware and the software and just um, how, you know, the, the competence side, we've got to have the hardware on this, but we also have to have the software. And, uh, you know, you have a, a computer or a phone that's great hardware without any software. And it's, it's going to be very, very useless. Uh, but that experience that you have is is extremely powerful. I love this concept called differentiated experience. And one of the things we're passionate believers in at Selling from the Heart is that sales professionals are responsible for creating the experience that their clients have with them. They may not be able to control everything about the company, but they can control the experience that they offer their prospects and clients. Unpack this concept of different differentiated experience for us, if you would. Yeah, so part of it goes back to all all of my books in the series have the word goldfish in them. (laughs) And the goldfish is kind of the master metaphor of why differentiation and experience is so important. So I feel like I'm doing a lot of hand things today, but the quick story behind the goldfish is that the average goldfish is the size of your thumb, right? So that's about three to three and a half inches. Well, the largest goldfish in the world is almost 20 inches. Wow. It's, it would be like, what, Larry, it would be like you walking out of your home in California and bumping into somebody who's three stories tall. <laughs> uh, okay. First of all, I'm five foot six on a freaking good day stand. So <laughs> this happens so, to Larry every day. <laughs> <laughs> so it begs the question why, you know, and, and some goldfish only grow to be two inches. In length. And so if you're a salesperson or if you're an organization, there are five reasons why you grow. And here's the thing the same five reasons apply to everyone who's listening right now. So I'll break down really quickly the five reasons and let's see how they translate in business. So most people have heard the first one, which is the size of the bowl or the pond that you're Mm -hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And the bigger the bowl, the bigger the pond, the more you typically grow. 
If, have you guys heard that about goldfish before? Oh, sure. Yeah, there was yeah. a yeah. Dr. Seuss book about that, I remember. So, yeah, absolutely. Busting out the Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> it's a total flashback there, Stan. So no, no worries. So in business, you know, that's simply the market that you sell to. And the larger the market, right, the more you can grow. Um, so the bigger the territory you have. The second one is, is the simplest of the five. Your growth is also impacted by the amount of other goldfish in the bowl or the pond. And this one's an inverse relationship. Mm -hmm. So the more goldfish there are, it tends to stunt the growth of a goldfish. Um, so who are the other goldfish? They're, they're, it's your competition. Sure. Right. The more competition you, the harder you have. The third reason is, is the, is the quality of the environment that you're in. Um, and so if you're a goldfish, the more nutrients in the water, the less cloudy the water is, the more you grow. Now, in business, this used to be the most difficult one when I used to give my talks until March 13th, 2020. Because, and I want you to think macro, what's that outside environment in business? It's simply the economy. Mm -hmm. Like your ability to grow is going to be dependent upon those external factors. Here's number four. If you're a goldfish, how you do in your first 120 days of life will determine how big you ultimately get. Mm. So they have 80 to 100 brothers and sisters when they're born. They're the size of a top of a pin. So how they do in the first four months is a critical time. Um, so what are you called in business your first four months of life? Well, you're a uh, newbie, what, you know, whatever yeah, the yeah, or, term, yeah. Or if in business terms, you're a startup, yeah. right? Or think about it. If you offer a new product or service, how it does in that critical time will be a factor for growth. Well, here's number five. We, we've had the, the bowl was the market, the other goldfish competition. The external environment was the economy. First 120 days, how you do when you're starting out. Here's number five, genetic makeup. So what are you born with that separates you from all of the other goldfish? And the stronger your, your genes are, and the more you're kind of separated from everyone else, the bigger you get. You know, if your genes are weak and you're like everyone else, the less you typically grow. Mm. And so in business, I would, I would say like that genetic makeup is simply differentiation. Mm. Yeah. How do you stand out amongst everyone else? Um, and to me, you know, we're talking in terms of sales. If you're a salesperson who really differentiates themselves on the ability um, to really upgrade their humanware and to be able to build relationships, um, that that's a game changer. And so I also tell people, you know. Of the five, what do you really have control over? Hmm. You don't have control over the market. You certainly, unless you're buying them, don't have control of your competition. If anyone has control over the economy, please see me after this podcast. <laughs> right? And if you've already been around for four months in your current role or your business that you've been, I mean, you can't change that. The only thing you can change is how you differentiate, not what you do, but again, why you do it, the reason why you do it, your purpose, and how you do it. And specifically to me, how do you go beyond just the transaction to honor the relationship? And that's the heart of differentiated experience. I oh, Daryl, this is all inspirational experience as the third part of the trust formula. I absolutely love this. Love, so, love, love this. This is fantastic. We've got a lot to unpack here. Um, we're going to take a brief break to hear from one of our friends in the Selling from the Heart community, Ed Molitor, about what it means to him to sell from the heart. We're also going to hear from one of our sponsors. And when we come back, Stan, I want to take a deeper dive into differentiation. 
how do we do it? What can we do? So let's hear from our good friend Ed Molitor, one of our sponsors, and uh, we'll rejoin this conversation in just a few minutes. Are you ready to unleash your business? Work Better Now provides incredible full-time remote talent that positively impacts your business from day one. Free your time and resources from administrative tasks and from tedious hiring activities. Whether you need an executive assistant, need to staff up a department, or you're a high-performance sales professional that simply needs more time, Work Better Now's reliable, full-time, and dedicated remote workforce is vetted and matched specifically to your operational needs. Larry and I have enjoyed having our Work Better Now assistant, Carmen, on our team for almost two years, and she has made an enormous positive impact on our business. Head over to workbetternow.com to schedule a free consultation and transform your business. When you mention the word heart during your conversation, you will receive $150 off for the first three months of your service. Fine. How do you define what winning means to you? And sales is about winning. For some reason, it's cancel culture. Sometimes we're afraid to talk about it, but yet we hold everybody to that standard. But what is it that winning means to you? And, And the very first thing we talk about inside of that is values. And I believe that sales is transformational, not transactional, okay? And we talk a lot about authenticity. And the way we break authenticity down here is this, honesty, integrity, and vulnerability. But you look at those first two pieces of honesty and integrity, okay? Do you have the ability to be with honest with yourself and with others? Integrity, do your values, beliefs, and actions, are they aligned? And do your thoughts, your words, uh, and your your actions, you, you do what you say you're going to do, when you're going to say you're going to do it, how you say you're going to do it. And I believe your values drive selling with the heart. And authenticity, it, it just drives that trust. And when you become the trusted advisor for your client, when they know that not only are you using your story to sell, but you're using their story to sell as, as well. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. And by the way, if you're listening in and would like to be featured on a future episode of Selling from the Heart, just text the word video to 21,000. That's video to 21,000 and you'll get easy instructions on how you can be a part of the show. And this concept, and Ed even alluded to it in his uh, outtake there, is we've got to figure out ways to differentiate ourselves in a crowded marketplace, in a fish bowl full of other fish with a lot of other things we can't control. I love this analogy. Um, So when you think about differentiating around the why, you said it starts with the why. We couldn't agree more with that. What's your take on why the why is so critical in this concept of differentiation? Yeah, again... I think it simply goes down to the way that we've evolved as human beings. And, and, and in diamond goldfish, we talk about how important understanding your own biology is. And, and, and I shared it at the beginning, you you know, the first question anybody asks when they see you and it's in a split second Mm -hmm. is what is your intent towards me? Which is, you know, why, What's your why? And if you mm-hmm. if they don't understand that, that becomes a really big barrier to trust. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he, here's what's fascinating, and it and it plays off those first couple seconds, and and it's it may not happen. And this is what people need to be cognizant of: is what's going on in that person's head in the first couple seconds of that conversation they have with you. And you, you alluded to the word trust is that's one of the first things is, is this person trustworthy? Can I open up to this person? What's going to happen if I do open up to this person? And it just all goes back to, and I use the word comfortable. And these are the things that salespeople can control is how comfortable can you make somebody feel about you and you can control this, but I I've been dying to ask this and, and I'm, I'm like going, what the heck is Stan's fascination with colors and goldfish? <laughs> there, ha- there has to be a direct correlation to this. And how does this all tie in? And I love the analogies you're using, but walk us through how this all ties in 
to the concept of growing sales and all that is the fascination behind goldfish and colors is this you're piquing my curiosity like none sure other. so so there there's 11 different colors in the series um and the first three in the series i i never knew it was going to be a series by the way um the first three colors are purple green and gold do you know if you put those together, do you, you know what that might be a reference to? Hmm. And we no. might be, I might be judging your partying credentials if you don't know what purple, green, and gold. Laissez le bon temps roulé. There we go, right? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Mardi Gras. That's so right. The three official colors of Mardi Gras. Uh, good pickup there. Um, and the, the, I started with purple goldfish, which was all about the customer and their experience. That was followed by green, which is about the employee mm. and their engagement and the mm -hmm. experience you provide beyond dollars to so the green. And then gold, which is this idea of what do you do for your top customers and top mm. employees? But the, the reason being it's a, that, that it's an ode to specifically New Orleans and Mar through Mardi Gras, is that there's one word that comes from New Orleans that exemplifies the idea of going beyond the transaction. I love it. And it's, <laughs> you know the word I'm talking about? Ah, yeah, absolutely. More French. Lagnep, right? The extra. Yeah, yeah my, it's Creole, so French and Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, Lagnep or... <laughs> That's a Canadian trying to say it for you. Pota well, potato, potato. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it dates all the way back to yeah. the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And and if people don't have never heard the word, it's this custom that grew out of New Orleans. It's this idea that the business or the business, you know, the salesperson does a little something extra to honor the relationship, to go above and beyond the transaction. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that's when I started out, that was something I saw that was missing in business. Mm. Um, because I think the biggest myth in business is this idea of meeting expectations. It's like being on time. No one's ever on time. You're either early or you're late. And so, this idea of lanyap or what I originally called a purple goldfish is how do you do little things mm. to go above and beyond the transaction to show that you care as part of the experience? Um, and how do you earn at the end of the day, word of mouth and referrals? You know, if you ask any salesperson or any business owner, what's your number one driver of business growth, what would they say, Larry? Uh, hopefully they'd say their clients and be able to sell more to their clients. Well, not only selling more to their clients, but getting referrals mm -hmm. from their current clients. Yeah. And the reason being is that, think about it, when you've been referred as a salesperson to somebody, you already walk in with trust because somebody has stood up and vouched for you. So they've already vouched for your competence Right. Um, and here's the thing. If if you've been referred as a customer to a business over your lifetime, you're upwards of four times as valuable to that business. You stay longer and spend more. Yeah. Right. Up to twice the amount over your lifetime. And here's the key thing, because you've been referred yourself. What are you more apt to do? It's going to return the favor. Yeah, you refer yeah. more over That's your right. lifetime, you yeah. refer up to twice the amount of people. Yep. Absolutely. So, so I tell people, you know, if 90% of businesses say word of mouth is their best marketing strategy, and I'll credit Jay Bear for this because he's he did the research. He asked businesses what what percent of business businesses have a word of mouth strategy? No, yeah, one percent. Wow, wow. Um, yeah, so so the so the colors really quickly. I mean, it was a progression for me. The one in the series that really I'm passionate about because it really speaks to both warmth and competence, mm -hmm. and and just how our biology 
biology drives our behavior. It's called the diamond goldfish. And there's a very specific reason behind why diamond. Um, and I believe part of the reason why myself and my co-authors picked it is that this concept of what we call the diamond rule. Mm. And, and I think it's, it's the 4.0 version of winning in business. If you, if you view business as a game. So really quickly, the, if that's the 4.0 at diamond, you have to start at the 1.0, which is called the silver rule. Have you ever heard of the silver rule? I haven't. Can't say I have. So I never knew of it, but it dates back all the way back to Confucius. And the silver rule was simply this. Do no harm. Hmm. Which you think that's pretty like fundamental, but like that's like every every doctor takes that as like their oath. Right. Maybe the most successful business of the last 40 years has had that as their corporate motto. Google's Google's literally corporate motto was do no evil, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't exactly tell you how to perform or what to do. It just tells you what not to do. The golden rule, I, I don't even have to ask you. Everyone knows the golden <laughs> exactly. rule. Exactly. Right. But here's the thing. If in business, the golden rule is a really bad rule. Because if I treat you the way that I want to get treated, there's a big assumption there. Yeah, sure. Um, and that's simply I'm assuming that what I would want is what you would want. Um, and, and it turns out we have one of four behavioral styles. And so if you're not in my and, and by the way, the close rate in business is about one out of four opportunities. Imagine that. Right. So if you're 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 getting lucky and somebody has the same style as you and you connect with them. Great. But if anything you were doing in business only succeeded 25 percent of the time, you'd want to do better. And so the three point is and most people know it's called the platinum rule. Mm hmm. And the platinum rule is a little more based in empathy. And it's simply treating others the way that they want to get treated. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a great philosophy. It's finding out what your client wants, right, and how they want to get treated and then treating them that way. Now, that sounds really good in the, in the abstract. But if you're 100 percent focused on your client, who are you neglecting? Yourself, yourself, you're, you're yeah. neglecting yourself, right? So, it that's a great strategy, but as probably the greatest philosopher of our time, Mike Tyson once <laughs> said, right? Everyone, everyone has a strategy till what they get knocked in the face, punched in the face, <laughs> in the mouth. and you know, we get knocked in the face in the sales profession. So, the, the diamond rule kind of takes the best elements of the golden rule and the platinum rule. And it's the idea of, of first managing yourself. So understanding yourself mm. and specifically how you react under pressure. And then it's understanding your client and their triggers to reduce the pressure that they feel. Um, and that's acting in that 4.0 um, diamond rule space. I love it. This is incredibly powerful <laughs> stuff. And one thing I know is our audience is going to want to learn more about the diamond rule. Um, Stan, what a great conversation. How can folks take the next step and get more Stan Phelps in their life? <laughs> uh, um, so, <laughs> simply, you can go to stanphelps.com. I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn. Connect with me there. Um, and then... You can look up the Goldfish series of books. They're all available on Amazon. Fantastic. Well, this has been this has been awesome. Stan, thanks for hanging out with us. And this has truly been a differentiated experience, Stan. It's been an I have a whole, I have a whole new understanding of Goldfish, <laughs> Mr. Phelps. And uh, listen, uh, we really appreciate you sharing time with us and uh, with all of our friends. And uh, this has been fantastic. I have a feeling we're going to be talking again in the near future. So Stan, thank you so much. And uh, keep 
differentiating, keep being the diamond. I'm running out of uh, metaphors. We appreciate you. Feed the goldfish. <laughs> Feed the goldfish. Well, really, really quick. You, you, you know, you know what a diamond is? Is simply, it's a chunk of coal. That's right. That did well under pressure. That's right. Yep. I love it. I love it. Stan, your Thanks, true man. inspiration. Awesome. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me on, Larry and Daryl. Thank you. <laughs> All right, take care. Uh, Larry, oh, I love great. it. I want more Stan Phelps in That's my life. That's right. I mean, you you got to get uh, a copy of Diamond Goldfish and. I, you know, the concept of the experience when he was going through yeah. the five uh, things that make a, a goldfish grow and you start to realize, you know, there are things that you don't control. You can spend your life griping about those. You can yep. take the one thing you can control and you can make sure that you're creating that differentiated experience. And I love, man, I was getting hungry for Cajun food when uh. he was talking about Lanya. New Orleans used to be in my sales territory. That's an amazing thing. But, you know, you go to a restaurant there and there's always something extra yeah. and uh, they're not just trying to fulfill the minimum order. They're trying to go above and beyond. And it makes you want to come back. You know, absolutely. And, and that's what I love because it just ties so well into the inspirational experience. And mm -hmm. there's going to be some people that, you know, this is hard one to swallow is you are responsible for how you show up. You yeah. all work for great companies. You may have great leaders, great support. But let's just face it, the one thing you can control is how you show up for your clients, the experience you provide. You can control that. And that's why I believe you're responsible for it. I love how the message ties in. Plus, I didn't realize you can tie in goldfish and colors <laughs> and all this. And it's awesome. <laughs> so much fun. And one thing you want to show up for is the Selling from the Heart Insiders Group. Join us every Friday. If you want to come test it out, go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash free dash pass and come join a community of like-hearted sales professionals. I guarantee you're going to love it. Thank you to everybody who is leaving reviews on the podcast, whether you watch on YouTube or on LinkedIn live every Saturday morning at 8.30 Eastern, or whether you listen on an audio podcast platform. Thanks for leaving reviews. It's helping us spread the word. We've got some exciting news coming out throughout the fall. So make sure to like or subscribe. And until next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep building trust, be a diamond goldfish, and most of all, sell from the heart.